them to hear from you any of the interesting moments in your life uh, where you got inspiration in some wonderful way from a teacher or from school, college. So we'd love to hear a little bit about you and your childhood and how, what inspired you to be who you are today. What did our Shreyas asking me? What is that one, to, one inspiration? Believe me, I seek inspiration every day in my life. I seek it from books. I seek it from articles. I seek it from webinars like yours. Uh, so much of inspiration, which is all around. What wrong is also happening around. But I seek what I can correct in the wrong rather than be lamenting on the wrong. My approach is how do I minimize that wrong and maximize the good. So I think if one develops a habit of maximizing good and minimizing the negative, you are daily nourishing and inspiring yourself. So I think my life's inspiration is coming from a daily reading, my daily workout, my daily work habits, so which have been developed through nature and nurturance. So my message here through this question answer, this particular question is that remember, there's no one day for inspiration. There are incidents like your presentation is a massive inspiration for me. How much you could do over, over a period of life and how you're inspiring in such a variety of ways. And you're touching all aspects of vocations and economic development or social development. So I do believe my inspiration is minute to minute, every minute, wherever, whichever is a source of energy I get, I use it. And that's how my day ends. So you've played so many roles in your life. You've been an IPS officer, an administrator, a social activist, left in Ghana, an author, an advisor to the UN, and a former tennis player. Which of these was most challenging for you? And which one do you feel was the most impactful? You know, whatever I took upon um, Shreya, I left an impact. The point here, in public life, everything has a reason and a meaning. I found the meaning in everything I did. If I did anything, I found the meaning and expanded the larger meaning of that, that area of influence. If I took upon, if I didn't, I didn't. Something which I didn't interest me, it, I did not. But whatever I took upon, I found the meaning in it. And even if it was insipid in the beginning, I had tried to add taste. So if you ask me which of the postings, whether it was crime prevention, whether it was traffic management, whether it was Inspector General Prisons, whether it was Narcotics Control Bureau, whether it was Bureau of Police Research and Development, whether it was my two NGOs which came up, and then also then the, with the United Nations, and then, of course, with the as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, where I've just recently come back from. Believe me, every meaning, every posting had a very deep meaning. And it left, uh, it demanded a lot of hard work from me. I gave it all I had. But I think the reach was very large when I worked as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry, because then I was like the first citizen of the, of the Union Territory as Lieutenant Governor. And since it was an executive posting, it's not the traditional governor posting. There's a difference between a full-fledged governor and a Lieutenant Governor. That is the difference which people don't understand, but the legal powers and responsibilities are very clear. The, the main state of a governor is very, very constitutional and ceremonial. Whereas a lieutenant governor is an administrator, where you have the final financial powers, you have the final policy making powers, and you have a lot of service matters. That means you are the final arbiter or the decider of the administration of a union territory, which is Puducherry. Now, that to me was very impactful because I was a hand in policy making, hand in financial management, where I had a large budget to see how things are done. So I would think. If I would think largest long-term impact has been my last assignment as Lieutenant Governor, where I could steer the policies. I could ensure that every penny goes to the person it is needing to, where I could, could bring down the corruption in a substantial way. I could train people, orient them, work, bring about a better work culture and ensure public service serves the people. So I think if I would say last posting was the most impactful, whereas earlier was transformative in their own respective way to whomever it reached out. As left and Governor Puducherry, it reached out to all left and right, all sides of the corners of Pondicherry. Whereas other postings were impactful, let's say prison was prison, or traffic was traffic, it was very targeted. But as administrator, it was overall. So 
I've tried to do, draw the best energy and give the best energy to each other. What inspired you to become a police officer? Well, it's much more accessible now as compared to the time when you became the first woman IPS officer. What are the aspects that girls should really keep in mind when they're seeking such a career? First of all, I would urge and I would really like to see girls play outdoor. You see, girls are very nicely comfortable indoor, like indoor music. It's very comfortable. So indoor art is very comfortable. So indoor has its own charm and its own very heavy value. But outdoor adds to that. So if you're an outdoor girl from the beginning and particularly participative in sports, it does not matter whether you compete or not. But if you play as a student, boy or a girl, particularly girl, because boys have an orientation towards outdoor and girl, and parents also let them, they are mobile. Boys are mobile. Girls are not mobile if parents don't choose them to be. So girls are held back. In my case, I was a 100% outdoor girl. I would bike, I would scooter, I would run, I would walk, I would bus, I would train. I was very, very mobile. So with the result that I experienced, experienced mobility from my early times. So mobility and sports, if it enters with you as a girl, you become very confident and you become strong. And then you can take on the decision making faster and you take on challenges even better. So I think that's what has naturally taken me to the Indian police service because I also became a full-fledged NCC cadet, went to hikes, went to uh, camps and uh, led the parades. So before I start to lead the, the Delhi police parade, I led the NCC parades. And I was in uniform, a cadet before I became a, a probationer in the police. So I think I would urge that if we can make sure girls play, they play team games, they play individual games, it will shape them up better, make them physically and mentally stronger. We all know change is inevitable and constant, yet we see reluctance and hesitation when you're wanting to welcome a change. What in, your, what in our upbringing of children should we focus on to instill the values of adaptability and change in them? That will happen when you make them mobile, when you put them into doing, learning and doing, reading and applying. That is why internships, apprenticeships are very important part of the national education policy. That is where the new changes are coming. It give them subjects of their choice and apply, make them apply whatever they are learning. And if they start early in application, I think it will groom them much better and stronger. Right. Um, talking about all of the various aspects of your career and the achievements, you also found the time and the energy to be involved and deeply with two NGOs. And I'm certain you're exposed to many, many more, including the Vidya story which you just shared. Uh, so you spoke about what, in, you know, what you found inspiring and impactful about Vidya, but can you share one more such story with our viewers so that people know that change is possible? And you spoke about being the change. So if you can speak a little bit. Well, NGOs that. are born for change. A a NGO every moment is for transformation. And therefore NGOs have continued to grow. Like you've se I've seen you grow and I've seen my own NGOs grow. And they are all the time uh, agile. You have to be agile as NGOs. Like today's digitization world is a part of accepting change realities. So if you don't use IT in the current NGO work, earlier when we started, and I'm sure Vidya also started the same way, where we were enrolling children, bringing them off the streets to get into education. Vidya and Navjyoti have the same roots. Our sources were the slums of Delhi and where we were going house to house to bring the child into school. We were called mainstreaming a school and there were no schools. So because of our mainstreaming of the schools, government of the day then was set up 10 schools. So we forced the government of that day to set up schools in tents. And from tents came the Sarf Shikshabhyan. That from policy came the Sarf Shikshabha. Then came the right to education. See how we've all as NGOs played a role in Sarf Shiksha Beyond policies in our own small way, and then the right to education. And today I tell you, there is no child out of school. Yeah. 
I, the areas in which work, there is no child out of school. And now keeping the child out of school is an offense. Earlier, keeping the child out of school was an income for the parents. Yeah. Because the child would go and earn some money and then the child would have pocket money and he didn't want to go to school. But when we were taking the children compulsory, we were comp compelling a change. That's what NGOs are for. And I think that's what Vidya and Navjyoti have played a stellar role in their own small ways. And like many other NGOs, I'm aware of. So therefore, I think we've got to go be transformative and we keep pivoting. We, the NGOs have to keep pivoting according to reality and be ahead of time rather than behind time. And that's what today Navjyoti is also moving towards, is moving towards greater digitization and digital training. And I see that already being done by Vidya also. Uh, you spoke about the importance of infusing sport, right? Sport has been a part of your life from a very young age. You've also shown your love for music and literature. But what happens, unfortunately, is through the course of education, a lot of parents don't want their children to continue playing sport. They say, you know, start focusing on your studies. They pull them out of the classes. How important do you feel these non-academic aspects are in the development of a child or a youth? Because that's something all the parents should hear, really. Without that, Shreya, without that outdoor activities or extracurricular activities, that extra development of the person is denied, is held back. If you have to be schools, books plus, you have to be books plus. And if you're not books plus, then you have denied that much of development. And it's not, it's not absolute that you go into tournaments and you go and compete. It depends on the level you reach. But playing means team building. Playing means more friends. Playing means nutrition. Playing means hungry for food. Playing also means justice. Playing means playing by the rules of the game. Playing also means sportsman spirit. Playing means learning to lose and win. Play, playing also means preparation. And you do not cheat. So it's all openness. So transparency comes by play. Team building, best friends are made on the tennis, on the courts, on the playing ground. So it's not that you become a champion but you become a player. You become a player in the, in the game of life, whether it's books and it's books plus. So if you do both, it's absolutely learning the art of living, the life skills, the real full round life skills come through the playground. So given all that you've accomplished, ma'am, in your life, what are your unfulfilled desires and uh, that drive you in, at this time for the purpose that you live with and what is it that you want to do with your career in the future? No, no, no. I have no unfulfilled desires. I live by the day and I'm happy with what I have. I have no, I have no such unfulfilled hanging desires. I have no more wants. I'm out of the wants from long time. I'm really, if you ask me, what do I want? Well, I certainly want a good sleep and I want to earn my sleep and I certainly want clean, good food, but I want, but I want to be hungry for food. Right. And I certainly want to do a good fitness because I, I want to stay healthy. My wants are very simple. I want to be hungry for food. I want to sleep well. And I certainly want water in my life. I'm very scared if there's no water in the house. Believe me, that really unnerves me. For me, water is so essential. That is why wherever I've been, I've been a very water champion. I made sure Puducherry makes water rich issues. People don't go st are starving out of water. So I think these are my wants. My wants are very, very basic, but I want to earn them and deserve them and generate them. Uh, there is Sakshi Yadav who asks, sometimes I want to raise my voice against wrong, but then my parents stop me or the society from doing so. We are brought up in a way where raising voice will bring us problems. And that's her question. I think there's a difference between raising a voice and making a point. Uh, there is no one answer saying raise your voice in everything. No, I think it's situational. It's there, it calls for maturity, it calls for wisdom, it calls for environment, and it also sees whether it will work. And it also calls a sense of timing. So I would not say raise your voice in everything. Sometimes silence is a voice. But sometimes a situation where you need to make a point, speak it. So I, important, I would not be able to give you a very generic answer to say, Sabi girls, raise your voice. There's no shrill in this. But if you see a wrong thing, you should understand that I should 
बर्दाश्त कैसे ना करूं और इसकी विक्टिम मैं कैसे बनू बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट ये कि अपने आप को विक्टिम मैं नहीं बनू और वो विक्टिम कैसे ना बनू बोल के ना बनू या दूर हट के बनू या उसको सबक दे के बनू या पब्लिक एक्सपोजर दे के बनू कैसे करू ये एक्सपीरियंस कहेगा बट कैसे अपने आप को बर्दाश्त नहीं करना ताकि तुम अपने आप को विक्टिमाइज मत करो डोंट बी अ विक्टिम योर सेल्फ कैसे अपने आप को विक्टिम होने से बचाना फॉर एवरी गर्ल इज इंपॉर्टेंट चाहे वो शादीशुदा है चाहे वो घर में डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस है या वो वर्क प्लेस में है आई थिंक शी हैज टू उसको चॉइस लेनी है कि मैंने अपनी विक्टिमाइजेशन कैसे बदल प्रिवेंट करनी है अब वो उसमें हर सिचुएशन का हल अपना होगा दे इज नो वन जेनरिक आंसर बट ये जेनरिक आंसर जरूर है कि बर्दाश्त की भी हद होती है कई बार पहले कोई गलत देख रहे हो तो पहले टाइम पर ही बंद करो और यहां देखो चांस देके उसको बता के कि क्या ही दोबारा करता है तो मैं रोक लू तो यू नो दे नो वन मैकेनिकल आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन सो इसका मतलब यह है कि हमारी ट्रेनिंग जाती जाती रहनी चाहिए जैसे आपने अंतरा ने बताया बैड टच अब बैड टच की बात कब शुरू होनी चाहिए जब बच्चा स्कूल में है yeah. उस वक्त अगर बताएंगे बेटे ये जो अंकल आपको ऐसे ऐसे कर रहे हैं ये बैड टच है सो बैड टच एंड गुड टच वी मस्ट द बड़ी होके तो उसको पता ही ये बैड टच है लेकिन उस वक्त क्या बच्चा कहता है कि अंकल मुझे ये नहीं करना है अंकल ये ठीक नहीं है अब वो बच्चा कैसे बोले अंकल को दैट इज वॉट विद्या एंड नवज्योति हैज टू कंटिन्यू टू डू इन देर ओन स्कूल वॉट इज द बैड टच लेकिन अर्ली सेंसिटाइजेशन ताकि बच्चे को भी पता ही नहीं है ये क्या है और वो बैड टच करते करते वो उसका हाथ कहीं और चला जाएगा या उसको विक्टिम बना लेगा इसलिए कई जगह तो अवेयरनेस है अब बच्चा वहां जाके अगर मम्मी को नहीं बताएगा तो बच्चा विक्टिम बन जाएगा इसलिए उस वक्त उस उम्र में बच्चे को बताना पड़ेगा कि बेटा अगर कोई बाहर ऐसे आपको करता है आपको आके मम्मी को बताना है तो नाउ दिस इज दैट्स वेर यू कैन से teaching is to be you have to tell your teacher or you have to tell your mother yeah. now next come is supposing he is an older and the employer does that bad touch to the woman now that she has a choice whether she raises a voice means she calls out or she talks to one one or she spies to the boss it depends on her situation what is the best way to handle that situation it calls for an experience and maturity so i think har age ke sath ये समझ की लेवल है हर एज की इंटरवेंशन अलग है फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डोंट कीप प्रोड्यूसिंग चिल्ड्रन प्लीज इफ यूर सिंगल पेरेंट देन इफ यू हैव यू गॉट चिल्ड्रन देन नाउ गेट ऑर्गेनाइज डिपेंड ऑन हाउ मेनी चिल्ड्रन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई थिंक marriage is the most altering part for any woman she must marry not because parents want her to marry she must marry if she's really wanting a partner in life number 1 number 2 any partner will not do if she's getting the right partner by understanding then it's a good marriage otherwise why are you why are you sacrificing your life today marriage with it or without is not mandatory it's a choice one women must exercise similarly that means getting the right partner is a great luck but if you made a right choice get a bad choice if you made a bad choice get out of it as soon as possible don't sacrifice your life for the rest of your life three motherhood is also altering you must become a mother only if you want to be a mother not because you socially you need to be a mother third when you produce a child then it's a sacred you are reliving your own life now you have to save that life and groom that life that and in that you have need a lot of organization because remember the child looks for the mother first so parenting is a very major responsibility i don't think women should run to any one of these things urgently immediately marriage number 2 take very careful decision on a sour relationship and third is motherhood now you asked me the third stage third stage is when she's become a mother which means and if she's earning then she must uh, buy time 
which means get into day boarding schools for children if you're a longer. So go into day boarding school if you don't have family support. But if you can manage family support, then you are a blessed person. Get into family support or provide for support so that the family gets supported to support. See, so I think these are many, many levels of, depends on which level of working a particular woman is. But I am a believer that uh, marriage should be a very careful choice. Motherhood should be a very careful choice. And third, in career, family support, if it's available, take it. Take it. And if family support, if you are getting and you can balance it, nothing better than that. But in your earning, spend money for yourself. Don't save on that. Set, spend money to get services. Delegate what you can pay for and save your time. And when you save your time, enrich yourself in nurturing your child and having a quality of life. So I think even single marriage is fine. Make more female friends, have network, create sisterhood, and see that you have very good supporting friends. And NGOs like these are very good sisterhoods. So connect with your causes, connect with the cause. Single women should connect them with uh, volunteering and causes, which means when you volunteer with organization like Vidya, and I so noticed that you look, well, please see, you come and give time, take your child along and spend a quality. So remember, life is plenty uh, in your own terms. Live on your own terms. Don't live on others' terms. That, to me, is a successful life. Thank you so much, Dr. Kiran Rashmi. Over to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for your wonderful thoughts and wish you all the very best. Thank Look you. forward to seeing you sometime. So great. Thank, Thank you so you. much from Thank all of us. So much, Thank you. We love you.